Whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. So, peaches and bloom. So and so and so and so. Peaches and bloom. Above your loom. Above your loom. <coughs> uh, <coughs> would you uh, care to read the paper? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I thought you might like to read. No, thank you. Uh, we're doing it in New York at 5-3. Uh, yes, I know. You got on at uh, Hudson, didn't you? Yes. I seen you. I've been on ever since Schenectady. Oh, really? Yeah. I've got a girlfriend from Schenectady. Oh, is that so? Well, she's in New York now, working at SAC. Grace Crowell. Why, gee, I, I knew a Mildred Crowell once. Oh. Uh, her name wasn't Grace, though. Well, this was Grace. Oh. Gee, she had a brother, Mildred Crowell, who was quite a billiard player. Had three cushions. Eddie, his name was. That was it, Eddie. Oh, that's my name, too. Huh? Well, just my nickname. Oh. My real name's Edna. Oh. <clears throat> That's a beautiful bag. Oh, that, yeah. They, uh, they gave me that at the banquet last night. Were you at a banquet? Yeah, it's a farewell testimonial on account of my going to New York. <laughs> it's got my initials on it right there, FMS. Mm -hmm. Frederick M. Stevens. What's the M for? Uh, Martin. Oh, I like a man to have a middle name. Girls don't usually have them. Yeah. I'm just plain Edna. Oh, I wouldn't say plain. Well, you know how to make pretty speeches. Well, I'll bet you're used to them. Well, I'm not so used to them that I don't like to hear them. Especially from people who might think they're sincere. Oh, I never say nothing unless I really mean it. Well, I'm glad of that. Yeah. Speaking of speeches, you should have heard what Carl Fisher said about me last night when they gave me that bag. At the banquet, I mean. He said all the boys expected me to make Irvin Berlin jealous. And I said I didn't want to make nobody jealous. I just wanted to make my friends proud of me. Well, is that what you are, a songwriter? Yeah. Oh, not the music, just the words. Lyrics, oh. they're called. It must be wonderful to have a gift like that. That's what Benny Davis calls it, a gift. You've heard of him, haven't you? Benny Davis, he's written a lot of... No. Well, I guess I must Yeah, have. well, he just happened to be playing with a band in Schenectady, and uh, I just happened to meet him. And I just happened to show him some of my lyrics. And he told me, he said a fella like I, with that songwriting gift, was a sucker not to go to New York because that's where they have a mecca for a fella if he's got that songwriting gift. So he gave me a letter of introduction to Paul Sears, the fella that wrote Paprika. And you know Paprika, you've heard it. Paprika, Paprika. Well, I guess spice. you must have. Sure. You know, you write one song like that, Eddie, you never have to worry again. Well, are, are you going to be partners with him? Well, I guess so if he wants me to. I think he will probably after he sees this letter of introduction. That's the hardest part of all, you know, it's that getting acquainted. I'd have broke away a long time ago myself, only for my sister, whom I couldn't very well leave all alone. But uh, she got married a week ago Saturday. Oh, let me show you what she did for me. She gave me a half a dozen shirts, just like this, see? Oh. All different colors. Look at that. Oh. I'll bet you, Eddie, if you was to try and get a shirt like that, you couldn't get a shirt like that less than two and a half dollars. Oh, no. I love to sew. Has it got your monogram on it? Your initials? Well, she was going to put an F on the sleeve, but she was kind of busy. Oh. Well, if you were my brother, I'd embroider your whole initials. 
Oh, you don't have to be a person's sister to embroider the shirt. Mr. Stevens, I, I don't want you to misjudge me. I'm not the type of girl that talks to strangers. A girl alone in New York can't be too careful. Why, you take a Dr. Quinn's where I work. He's one of the best dentists there is, and, and he has lots of men patients that would be only too glad to start a little flirtation. Even Doctor himself was fresh the first day I met him. But I told him, I said, Doctor, I guess I don't care to work here after all. And then he just laughed and said, forget it. He was just testing me. And from that day on, he hasn't made any advances. Well, except once or twice. Well, I'll just bet you that if I was around there, he'd keep his distance. <laughs> I wish you could be. Well, I don't know. I got lots of excuses for... I've got a cavity right there. This is Vicky Grand Canyon. <laughs> oh, you'll have to excuse me from laughing, but... You know, Carolyn used to tell me I had the keenest sense of humor of any person she ever met. Uh, you know, the first thing you know, I'm gonna be up to see this doctor, what's his name, myself. Oh, he's wonderful. He'll fix you up. Well, if I was to come up there, it would uh, probably be when he was sort of out to lunch. <laughs> well, then what would you come up for? Well, I'll let you guess. Well, I'd rather you told me. Well, I might be coming up there to see you. Oh, you'll forget it. Uh, oh, no, I won't. Your smile will always haunt me. You must be a wonderful songwriter. Uh, Eddie, uh, <clears throat> were you planning to uh, go right home when you get into New York? Well, I intended to. Oh. Why? Well, I tell you, see, I thought when we got in the station, I might call up Mr. Sears about this letter of introduction. Oh, I wish you all the luck. Oh, thanks. And I thought that maybe after I called him, you might sort of like to have something to eat with me in a restaurant, maybe. Oh, well, most of the time I go home and cook my own dinner, just because I love to cook. It's going to be too late for you to cook tonight. Oh, well, I guess it would be. I I'd love to go. Oh, swell. I really would. You have eyes of blue, don't you? Yes. Grace says they go well with my face. <laughs> saying about Carl Fisher, you know, the fellow made me the speech last night. First time he's been back home since he's been married. We got wife and baby now. Oh, gee, I'm dying to have a baby. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Hmm. Nothing wrong in a woman liking a baby. Carl's wife certainly likes hers. Made him a good home, too. You know, she must be a good deal like myself. I suppose I'm silly and old-fashioned, but I've always thought that a girl should bring her husband something besides herself. Mm. Gee, that's such a beautiful moon, even if it isn't quite real. Hey, it's full, too. Like a June moon. It's not June, it's October. Yeah, I know, but they sort of go together. I'm always thinking of words that rhyme, even when I ain't working. You know, that'd make a catchy name, June moon. For a song, I mean. Do you know that you could get words to rhyme with that? Croon, spoon, soon, marry soon or something. Macaroon? Yeah, sure. You know, someday when that song's published and people are singing it everywhere, I'll say to my friends, I know the man who wrote that song. You know what's going to be right under my name, Eddie? What? Dictated to Miss Edna Baker. Oh, Fred, that's wonderful. Listen, I got to go now, Eddie, and see Mr. Sears, but I'll let you know what happens as soon as I come. Checks, please. This is the last song I gotta write with fake. You know, I I rewrite two whole bars of melody for him. Then I ask him, will he just change one little word of lyrics and he swats? Now look, this is the way he wants. As roses in June. And here's the way I think it ought to be. As a rose in June. See? Sounds just the same to me. Well, my way gives it a triplet, makes it twice as effective. Now listen. As a rose in June. Oh, isn't that enough? Am I going to have to sit around here all night listening to that? Well, why don't you go out someplace? You could go out if you want to. To with? 
Well, you could go out with Eileen. You and you and her could go someplace. You know she has a date with Hart. You want me trailing along? Now, I've just been explaining to you, I can't take you no place with this fella coming up to see me. Now, I told you one dozen times. I'm not asking you to take me any place. Except maybe for a walk around the block. That's free. If Eileen has got a date with Hart, why don't she keep it? It's half past eight. Don't you worry about that. What about him and her, anyway? If she's engaged to him, ain't she ever going to get married? You'll know as soon as there's anything to know. Uh, he'll wriggle off the hook some way. What makes you think that? Just the luck I'm running in. You know, if I ever get married again, it's going to be to a woman without no sister. She doesn't cost you much, and she's certainly company for me. Well, she could go get a job someplace, couldn't she? Oh, sure. And you ought to be able to place her with your influence. Now, look at here, Lucille. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello, Maxie. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm gonna be up here, gonna be up here all evening. Yeah, fine, swell. Right. Well, Maxie's coming up now, too. Just you wait till he meets this here Stevens fella. He'll really be what impressed. What time is it? Him and me's gonna write another paprika. I'll go crazy waiting around here. Well, I team up with this new lyric writer. You're gonna see some hits. That dress isn't gonna last you much longer. Yeah, I know it. Why don't you look around Monday and see what you can find? Maybe I will. I've been putting it off. I'm lazy, I guess. I'd sure never be too lazy to shop if I ever had anything to shop with. And just wait till my new song gets over. By that time, I'll only want a shawl. You know, there is absolutely nothing that helps a man so much as being married to a woman who always encourages him and looks on the bright side. Sam, you did something more for her besides talk. I would keep pretty quiet in this house if I was you. That is, unless I was paying board. Don't you dare say I'm dependent on you, because I'm not. Yeah, just for your meals, a place to sleep, oh, that's yeah. all. Oh, no. Well, make him lay off me if he knows what's good for him. Heart's gonna phone her, isn't he? It gets me crazy, this waiting. I nearly go out of my mind just sitting. You hear women brag about the nice, cozy evenings they spend at home with their husbands. Well, they're not married to a piano tuner with ten thumbs. I said he'd call me the minute he got home. Of course, you know him better than I do. <laughs> but when a man's really crazy about a girl, he calls her up. I don't care what he's doing. It's only when he's cooling off that he finds excuses. If you think he's cooling off, you're crazy. He's insanely jealous. Well, I guess I ought to get consolation out of one thing. No matter what happens, it's velvet. You're a fool to keep it up. Why don't you break away while there's still time? You better be thinking about heart. You may wind up as bad up as I am. Oh, don't you worry about me. If he wasn't so crazy about me, why would he be so insanely jealous? He's insanely jealous. Only I wish that thing would ring. Has he ever said anything halfway definite about getting married, I mean? Not in words, exactly. What'd he say it is? Well, he must be thinking it. Who's that? Maxie, I guess, or maybe that new lyric writer. Who? You know, the one that's coming to see Paul. Oh. Oh, you. Hi there. Say, so who's that out there, Maxie? Yeah, Maxie. Say, so you didn't come up from the office, did you? Do I look it? I'm playing this week down at the orchard, pounding the piano for a lot of squares. Oh, how I envy you people who can spend an evening at home. Yeah, it's a great treat. You know, Lucille, I might have been a songwriter, but I wrote tunes nobody ever heard before. They wouldn't stand for it. Hello there, Maxie. I say, you, you know this fellow Stevens is coming up, the lyric writer I told you about from Schenectady? Oh, let him try to get that one to rhyme. Yeah, he's young, but he's got a fresh slant. What does he do, right lying down? Just wait till you see the songs I'm going to turn out with this guy. I guess Berlin will go right out and kill himself. I don't write like Berlin. It's too bad. And you know why Berlin has got something on the ball? Because he's got somebody around who gives him some encouragement now and then. Say, that must be him right now. Oh, hello there, Mr. Stevens. I'm Paul Sears. Oh, Come right on. Hang your hat up right oh, there, will you? Thanks. Come on, I want you to meet the folks. All right. Mr. Schwartz, Maxie, shake hands here with Mr. Stevens. Oh, hi, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, hi, nice and this is my you. wife, dear. This here is Mr. Stevens. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Paul tells me you're a songwriter. Uh, well, not the music, just the words. It's all Paul needs, isn't it, dear? Yeah, gee, I'm one of Mr. Steer's greatest admirers. Sit down. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> Boy, it sure is great to be here, you know. 
It's a wonderful town. Gee, as soon as I get settled, I want to take me a ferry boat over to Staten's Island and back. That's an island you have to take a ferry boat to get there? Oh, you must have been there, though. Oh, sure. I go there all the time, just for the trip. Oh. Oh, I want to see the goddess to liberty, too. The statue, I mean. You know that they tell me that cost a million and a half dollars, and it weighs 250 tons. She ought to cut out sweets. You can really play the piano. Oh. Have you been through the Holland Tunnel? No, I haven't. Have you been through the Holland Tunnel? No. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, have you been through the Holland Tunnel? I've been waiting for someone to go with. Hey, I'll go with you. Grand. Yeah, boy, I want to go all sorts of places and get ideas for songs. I got one idea I want to tell you about, Mr. Sears. I haven't got it written down yet, but I want to tell you anyway. It's a song about traffic lights. See, green for come ahead and red for stop. Maybe a, a comical light song about a girlfriend signaling her boyfriend with different colored lights in the window. Green when it's all right for him to call. And red when her husband's home. Well, I was thinking about her father. I think I'd better go. Now, wait, just, just a minute, Max. See, maybe Mr. Stevens here has got some lyrics. You got any lyrics with oh, you? You sure. can show us. Paul, yeah. you don't understand. I have to be downtown by 9.30. It's only going to take a minute, Maxie. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead there, Well, I'd better explain this to you first so you'll understand it. I like a song with love interest. Well, I got the idea in a restaurant with a certain party, and she, uh, well, this party seemed to think it was pretty good. Well, that sounds all right. W what's the title? June Moon. Uh, uh, that's the title. June Moon? A war song. Oh, no, no. This is, this is all about June, and, uh, and there's a moon shining, and there's a boy and girl in love. And uh, something happens, and he leaves her, or she leaves him, or something. But anyway, every time he looks up at that moon, he thinks of her, you see. And then in the second verse, she'll be doing the same thing for him. That's fair enough. Uh, I, I don't know now. Another moon song. Sure, sure. June Moon, I've got it. You got an idea about it? I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, no. This is Lucille. Now, well, wait just a minute. Eileen! Yes. 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 Hello? Oh, no, not at all. What? You're in Philadelphia already? Well, I thought you weren't yeah. going till tomorrow. My, it must be important. Well, then I guess I won't get to say goodbye before you go. No, no, just forget it. Have a pleasant trip. I said forget it. Skip it. Goodbye. Mr. Stevens, this is my sister, Miss Fletcher. Eileen, this is Mr. Stevens. Hello. Mr. Stevens is a lyric writer. Oh. Been in New York long? Yeah, yeah about two hours. Mr. Stevens wants to go all over New York getting ideas for songs. Oh, you like it here? Yeah, I like it fine. Costs an awful lot of money to live in New York. Oh, I'm lucky. I still got plenty. Really? I'll bet you haven't been to any of the real places, have you? Oh, I've been to Rosie's. Oh, no. No, I mean the night places. I tell you what, why don't we make up a party, just the four of us? We'll uh, show Mr. Stevens the town. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean tonight? How about it? What do you say? Oh. Sure. I don't know why not. It, it sounds swell, but I'm afraid I have another engagement for tonight. Oh, well, that's all right. You can put that off. Oh, sure you well, could. Gee, I don't know. You see, Paul had another engagement, but he broke it on your account, didn't you, dear? What? Paul was just saying that what you needed was to go places where you, they do the latest numbers, so you'd know what kind of songs are getting over. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, gee, it sounds just swell, but I don't know on account of this other engagement. Oh, but you could do something well, about that. Um, you could go if you really wanted to. Well, don't you want to? Well, I'm not dressed to go out. Well, go where we don't have to dress. Yeah, what about the orchard and surprise, Maxie, huh? Sure, Lucille and I'll go get our things on now. Right wait, now, wait, just a minute, girls. The only trouble is I haven't got any money well, with that's me. That's all right, that's all right. Mr. Stevens can be treasurer tonight, and then you can fix it with him later. Yeah, yeah, so long as you're going to be partner. Yeah, on, yeah but I... It's is, is that all right with you? What do you think it would take for the uh, four of us to go out in New York on the town? Uh, you think it would come to more than ten dollars? You got more than that with you, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you mind if I use your phone for just a second? Oh, no, go right ahead. Thanks. I'll uh, just go in here and wash up.
Hello, Miss uh, Baker, please. Oh, Eddie? Uh, this is me. Gee, Eddie, I'm afraid that I won't be able to get around there tonight, like I said, because uh, I've got to work. You see, Paul Sears and his wife, they're going to take me to some places where I can uh, get some ideas and things. Uh, just the three of us. Of course, I'd rather be with you, Eddie, but it's just the point that... Oh, uh, I'll tell you all about it at lunch tomorrow. Uh, goodbye, Eddie. Well, you seem to be having your troubles. Oh, that, that, that's nobody. That's just a friend of mine. Oh, is she nice? Oh, it's nobody, really. She's certainly not like you. Listen, it's kind of early for the orchard. Why don't we take in the first show at the Copa? Well, is everybody oh, ready? Oh, grand. Then what do you say we go to the Latin Quarter? Yeah. You know where I haven't been in a long time? St. Regis Roof. Oh, oh this wonderful. Is wonderful view. Uh, where? St. Regis Roof. I get dizzy when I climb a ladder. Oh, <laughs> come on, Charlie. Just call me, Hey, what is your first name anyway? Frederick. that you've seen part one of June Moon, let's turn to our Westinghouse program. Ten gallons on my mind. <laughs> what do you mean, your ten-gallon hat? No, I mean the ten gallons of water my laundromat will save on a single load of wash. Now, the reason my laundromat will save so much is something that Westinghouse built in. It's called the water saver. Let me show you how it works. Now, Suppose that this is Wednesday night, tonight, and you have a few things you want to wash for tomorrow. Some silk lingerie, doilies, and Susie's best cotton dress. Now, with other washers, you'd have to use the full amount of water, even for this small wash, but not with a Westinghouse laundromat. Incidentally, this loading shelf comes in mighty handy. Now, I just slip the clothes into the laundromat and set the water saver dial at low. And the laundromat uses just the right amount of water for this small load. I save 10 gallons on this watch. Now, naturally, with less water, you don't have to use the full amount of soap like this, as you would in other washers. This is all you need, just half the amount of soap with the Westinghouse laundromat. Now, start the laundromat, and we're done. Look, no hands. <laughs> the Westinghouse laundromat does everything. It washes, rinses, damp, dries, even cleans itself and shuts off. It's so completely automatic, there's nothing left for you to do. Buy on proof. See the Westinghouse laundromat wash a load of your own clothes. Of course, the laundromat washes not only small and medium-sized loads, but full loads in one operation. Phone me and I'll pick up a load of your clothes and we'll wash them in the Westinghouse laundromat. Watch it wash and you'll agree the wash word is laundromat. Now let's return to Studio One and June Moon. I was just looking for Maxie. I guess oh, well, well, don't sit down if you're busy. Oh, yeah. Sure. <sighs> Gee, I'm all in. Gosh, it, it's been about two weeks since I've seen you, hasn't it, Eddie? Three. Yeah. Working hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. June moon. It, it's all finished now, Eddie. We're uh, just polishing it. Yeah. Well, it must be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to play it for Mr. Hart this afternoon, Paul and I. That's wonderful. Yeah. What's been the matter? Why, oh, nothing. I 
I've just been busy, that's all. I've been very busy. I was going to call you up as soon as I wasn't busy. Well, I tried to call you up two mornings, but they said you couldn't be waked up before one o'clock. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because I was up late the night before, working. Working. Well, Fred, these, these places you have to go around to, what kind of places are they? Uh, you know, places where they have music. Oh, nightclubs? Some of them, yeah. You and Mr. Sears? Well, generally, we all go together, a group. Well, who else? Uh, well, there's Paul's wife. She goes along. Lucille, her name is. Oh. Well, doesn't someone else go along to sort of, you know, even up the party? Well, nobody you know, Eddie. I hardly even know her myself. She just goes along because she's Paul's sister-in-law, and, and she lives there. Yeah, she lives there, and you couldn't very well expect to leave her home all alone. She's timid. Oh. Is she pretty? Well, I hardly ever even noticed. Well, how old is she? Gee, I don't know. Well, is she older than I am? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, she must be. She's been on the stage. Honestly? Yeah. Fred, you want to be careful, because take a woman like she that's close to 40 or more... Well, she ain't 40. Well, 38. And she sees a young boy that almost any woman would be proud to win your affections. And there isn't anything she might not stoop to to entangle you. There ain't no woman going to untangle me. Well, Fred, doesn't it cost a lot of money to go around to these places? Do they take you? Well, that part's going to be all right, Eddie, because as soon as they take June Moon, I get what they call an advance royalties. Oh, what? and the first thing I'm going to do is pay you back that little loan. That doesn't matter. No, I, I don't like owing money to a girl, especially to a girl. Well, it's just that I'm not so sure I'm going to have very much from now on. What do you mean? Well, I wasn't going to tell you, but I haven't got my position with the dentist anymore. Well, what did you do? Quit? He discharged me. Well, what for? Well, I made a mistake. I gave Mr. Morey's appointment to Mr. Treadwell, and Dr. Scrape Mr. Treadwell's bones instead of Mr. Morey. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Eddie. I, I wish there was something I could do, or... Well, there is, if you felt like it. Well, sure, what? Well, are you going to be busy after they hear your song? Uh, uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, have to work tonight with Paul. Oh, well, before that, after Mr. Hart hears it, Fred, couldn't I stay and listen to it, too? Oh, no, when Mr. Hart hears the song, no, he can't have anybody around, Eddie. He's uh, got to concentrate, you know. But I'm not busy all afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what you could do. If you'd like to, Eddie, you could wait here, and then after he hears the song, I'll come back and tell you about it. Oh, Fred, that's grand. And yeah. And then we can um, sit here and talk a while? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Fred, everything seems all right now. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd find you here. Hi, Maxie. Uh, this is Miss Baker. This is Mr. Schwartz. Uh, How do you do, Miss Baker? Paul wants to run through the number with you. Oh, good. He's back because I want to make a couple of changes. Are uh, you going to come over and hear our little concert? Oh, no. I prefer to wait here. And then Fred's going to come back and tell me the good news. <laughs> Thanks. See you again, Miss Baker. Goodbye, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, Schwartz. Gee, I, I think we got a hit, Paul and I. Oh, Fred, I know it. Yeah. Hey, hey, I got it, I got it this time. Me for Capri. How's that for a song title? How they wanted a novelty number. Sounds good. Ah, listen. In the verse, in the verse I got this sold, you see. Just remembers this dame you met down at Capri. That's a little island in Italy, just off the boot. But his dame here just gives him the air. And he ain't got no love to keep him warm, so... She gives him a slow boot to Italy. Oh, Maxie, now listen. Listen to these lyrics, will you? I'll play you the refrain. Now listen. Mm -hmm. He says to her... I think it might sound better in Spanish, yo. I don't know. Hello there, Fred. Paul, Paul, come on. Oh, we, hi, we got a lot of work to do, huh? What do you say? Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to do? You're going to wash the windows. Oh, you can't do that. we got to run through this song here. You Can't you go somewhere else first? 
first, I'm almost through for the day. They're singing all over the building. Go ahead, don't bother me. Oh, now. Mr. Hart. What? Mr. Hart, you all ready? All ready for what? Yeah, for the new song. What new song? For the one I wrote with Paul. Oh. Yeah, we'll run it through for you. That's very thoughtful. Yeah. M Mr. Hart. Uh, he don't seem to recognize us. He'll get around to it. Uh. Hey, Maxie, you know what I'm going to do if they like you more? No. I'm going to have me an evening dinner coat made with a tuxedo. I've been wearing an old suit of Paul's, and Miss Fletcher says it would hold two like me. They couldn't be two like you. Oh, she was just joking. I see. <laughs> Boy, she's a great sport, all right, isn't she? Make a wonderful wife, a real pal. You know, I think a man's wife ought to be their pals as well as their sweetheart. Well, it's worth thinking over. Gee, boy, I just didn't know nothing when I lived in Schenectady. Even the first few weeks I was in New York, I was kind of a sap. Ah, oh, that sounds incredible. Boy, I sure seen a lot in three weeks, though. Miss Fletcher, she's always locating new places. We was in three of them last night. We wound up at half past seven this morning. Hey, do you imbibe, Maxie? After listening to songs all day, I don't want liquor. I just go home and take a general anesthetic. Uh -huh. Heart's still tied up in there. Did he say with whom? Well, why don't we run through the number while we're waiting for him to untie himself? Okay. All right, chappies. <coughs> June moon shining above. Will my true love come soon? June moon, I am so blue. I know that you long for her too. Good. All right, let's have it. What's hey, the name of the song? What? For me, for Caprice. Hey, wait a minute. These guys have been here since 2 o'clock. All right, all right, let's have it. Now, what's the name of the song? June Moon. Oh, a great idea. I can't talk to him now. Come on in, boys. Come on, swell. Now, what's this thing called? June, June Moon. Moon. You see, it's all about love. In three-quarter time? Oh, they take it seriously. Oh. Yes, what is it? Hoagie Carmichael here. Why didn't you tell me? Who is it? Hoagie Carmichael. Aren't you coming out to me? Let him come to me. Oh. Oh, Carmichael's outside. He's a composer. Where is everybody? They went to see if a composer has two heads. What's he talking about? Search me. Hey, hey, why don't you go in there now and say hello to Hart? I'd rather run into him accidentally. It looks better. He didn't exactly keep the wires hot while he was gone. He wrote to me every place he went. Certainly sent you a beautiful postcard of the Detroit Athletic Club. And that new waterworks in Cleveland. Just the same, when he finds out I've been going around with Stevens, he's going to be insanely jealous. Hey, hey there. Hokey Carmichael's outside. Yeah? Yeah, I told him about my new number, Me for Capri. He says, it's a great idea. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard it yet, have Never you? Never mind, I'll take Carmichael's word for it. Hello there. Hello. 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 You, you, you can't you. stay here. Oh, who's thinking this? Oh, today? Mr. Hart. Huh? Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart. Well, I didn't know we had visitors. Hello, Lucille. Hello. This is Miss Fletcher, Mr. Hart. She's Paul's sister-in-law. Yes, I've already met Miss Fletcher. Yeah. Mr. Hart's been on a great big business trip. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, he's been to all the big cities, haven't you? Cleveland, Detroit. I understand Cleveland has a new waterworks. Hmm? You all ready for the new song, Mr. Hart? I mean, June Moon? Uh, good, let's uh, go. Fred's sure. been trying very hard to learn the new business. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we've been pretty nearly everywhere together, haven't we? Listening to all the new well, songs. I guess we have. Miss Fletcher's took me to all the big clubs. Oh, so you're a friend of Miss Fletcher's. Oh, I'd say we were pretty good friends, uh. wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, what do you know about that? Well, suppose you boys come to my office. We'll run the song. Okay, okay Mr. Hart. Well, oh, Paul, the lead sheet, the lyrics. Here we are. Oh, oh Maxie, we've got to have Maxie. Well, I'll send for him. Now, who wrote the song? I, I did. did. Did you see that? He's insanely jealous. If that's jealousy, I'll take plain lemonade. Ah, oh, you don't know him the way I do. He's burned up. He controlled it good. Well, it won't be long now. He's going to hear it at last. Yeah, we're waiting for the verdict, too. Well, Stephen's first offense. If he's lucky, he'll get off with a small fine. Well, they're off. So are we. 
Wait, come on. Let's go over to Rosie's and get a drink. Every time Paul writes a new song, I get slightly ill. It all sounds alike to me. I know that you long for her too. Sweet night birds winging along, singing a song of two. By that limerick, Stevens will be getting up a party for tonight. Yeah, I know. He's going to be kind of a nuisance with heart back. Uh, I can handle him. He's so far gone, you can tell him anything. Fear. Fear, please. We certainly do attract songwriters, we Fletcher girls. It's a curse. Mm, I don't know. Fred's not a bad kid. You know, I kind of like him. He might make a lot of money in this game. Plenty of others have done it. Maybe his lyrics are just silly enough to get over. Even if they do buy it, it won't mean anything to Paul and me. We're so far ahead of these royalties, we'll never catch up. Paul could write Madam Butterfly and wouldn't even get me a new girdle. Anyway, I got Stevens broke in right, whoever gets him. I imagine every week was thrift week in Schenectady. It's thrift year for me. Year in, year out, I'm getting pretty sick of it. Why don't you do something? Maybe I am. Yeah, what? I don't know. Nothing, I guess. But it sure would be a relief to talk to a man sometime that hates music. Hey, they're gonna take it. They took it. They're crazy oh, about it. Oh, that's fine. I knew they'd like it. That wonderful is my first song to be published. Oh, wonderful. Thrilling. Oh, boy. They gave me a check for $500. That's called my advance royalties. Maxie's gonna bring it right over. Well, they took it all right. You should have heard what Hart said about the music. Yeah, and the lyrics. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead, Fred. Well, the occasion which just occurred marks a millstone in my life. Uh-huh. Hey, I thought you people would be off like a shot. We're waiting for Fred's check. Oh, I'll bet you are. Here's your check, Freddy. Oh, great. oh boy, just Ooh, in time. $500. You just got to give me a great big kiss. <laughs> Ah, you too. Mm, you love me? You bet I do. Where'll we go for dinner? I could use a good steak, huh? How about 21? Fine, I've never been there. Freddie boy, you love it. Oh, I will as long as you're alive. Oh, uh, don't you worry about that. Wherever you are, that's where I'm gonna be. Coming, Maxie? Wherever you are, I'll stay here. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, guess we're all alone. Yes. Would you, uh, would you like a drink? I've never had one. Ah, come on. What'll it be? I have no idea. Say, <laughs> how old are you? I forgot. But old enough, huh? Oh, Mr. Swartz, you're very nice. <laughs> Marius, two straight rides on the rocks. On the rocks. And now let's pause for a moment and look at our program again. What's fluffier than a kitten? <laughs> well, I wonder. You needn't wonder any longer, because I'm going to show you. Here are six towels that were dried on a clothesline. They're hard and rough, not soft and fluffy. But here are six towels of exactly the same make and size, fluffier than a kitten. So fat, soft, and thirsty that one towel does the work of two, because they were dried by the finest method ever developed, a Westinghouse clothes dryer. What's more, this is by far the best way to dry all your clothes. Just watch. You take your clothes from the Westinghouse laundromat, which has washed them spotlessly clean, and slip them into the clothes dryer. Now, for clothes that need ironing, 
you set the dial to damp and they come out just right for ironing. Just think you never have to hand sprinkle again. Now, of course, with towels, children's clothes, and many other things, they don't need ironing. So for those things, you set the dial to dry. And that's all there is. No lugging heavy baskets, no hanging up great loads of clothes, and you're never at the mercy of the weather. There's nothing to compare with the Westinghouse laundromat and the Westinghouse clothes dryer. For saving time, saving work, your wash day is completely automatic all the way through. Buy on proof. Watch the Westinghouse twins in action. Phone me and I'll arrange to pick up a load of your clothes, wash and dry them, in the Westinghouse Twins, absolutely free of charge. You will see how well they are done. We return now to June Moon. No, 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 you don't get it. Did you, you hear about him actually? It's just sensational. No, I'm positive the girl's name is Edna Baker. Yeah, that's, no, she did work for the doctor. I know it. Drop I, that I, thing and listen, Maxie. Oh, she had a slight misunderstanding with a couple of patients. Yeah, that's, that, that's the girl. That's the girl. What was the number again? Plaza 5, Plaza 5, 3025. Oh, th thanks very much. Oh, uh, by the way, are his bones healing all right? That's wonderful. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Maxie, Maxie, Bye. it's incredible, I tell you. The fourth consecutive week on the hit parade. We haven't had a hit like June Moon since Java. And listen to this. Last Saturday, nearly 300 bands played it. Joe, huh? would you mind answering me a riddle? Yeah, what is it? Joe, did you have any idea it was going to be a hit? Honestly, now? Well, I'll tell you, Maxie. That's uh, all I wanted to know. Hello, Paul. Where's Steven? Hello. Is he here yet? Well, I've been looking for him myself. How are the new numbers coming? Oh, pretty good. Uh-huh. Pretty good. Oh, well, Fred doesn't seem to want to work much anymore. Huh? <laughs> Suppose they're meeting me here at 11 o'clock. Well, he ought to be getting busy. He's not going to work on his honeymoon. Yeah, that's right. Oh, here's the groom at last. You can huh? blame it on me. I've been making him buy some new clothes. Hey, kid. 11 o'clock, remember? Yeah, what well, is those clothes? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, you two are certainly to be congratulated. Thanks. Much obliged. Yeah, but don't forget your work. Uh, when do you sail? Saturday. Won't sail Saturday. Ah, I certainly envy you. I wish I could go along. Gee, not much chance, I suppose. Well, if you could postpone it a month. Hey, now that sounds like a swell idea. Don't be silly. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Eileen wants to be on the Riviera in the season. Oh, I see. Well, I, I hope they don't take you at Monte Carlo. Well, if they don't take us there, we could go somewhere else. Yeah, uh, yeah, anyhow, be sure and get your work done, huh? Yeah. Yep. Why didn't you ask him when you had a chance? He's advanced me too much already, oh, I mean. Oh, but sweetheart, you promised. Well, a little later on, I'll ask him. Well, maybe. don't forget. You'd ask him for $2,000. Two, well, I have to find Paul and get to work now. Oh, don't Will go you? to work yet. Just think. Only three more days until we get married. I thought it was four. Four until we sail. Only three until we get married. Oh, I'm glad we're going to Paris first, so I can get some new clothes. Uh, what have you been buying? Darling, those are all right for the boat, but not for the Riviera. All ready for the big trip? Yeah, boat sails Saturday, Maxie. I don't know what you want to go to Europe for. Yeah, gee, I wanted to visit Schenectady, but Eileen has her heart set on going to Europe. Fred, are you going to speak to Mr. Hart? Yes, ma'am. Well, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, that would be a good time. <laughs> uh, how do you feel, kid? I guess I'm a little bit tired, Max. The way I've been going it lately, I'm kind of behind in my sleep. But you've been having a lot of fun, all those nightclubs. Yeah, gee, that was fun at first, all the dancing and everything. Now, I don't know, Maxie. If I don't get some sleep soon, I'm going to have a nervous breakup. 
Say, um, this, uh, this trip to Europe, that's, oh. that's going to be kind of expensive, isn't it? Oh. Gee, I, I always thought that I'd save my money if I ever got it. Well, you certainly picked a thrifty girl. I don't know, Maxie. Gee, sometimes I get to thinking that, well, maybe a guy like I that's just starting out, maybe he shouldn't get married quite so soon. Especially to a woman that's got to have so many clothes. <laughs> Sometimes, Maxie, I think I shouldn't have got engaged. You know, I remember a case once in Michigan where a fellow was engaged to a girl and he didn't marry her. I didn't read that. Have you got the clipping? <laughs> no, but my memory's pretty good. I remember a mighty nice little girl, too. I even remember her name, Edna Baker. Hey, Maxie, you haven't seen her or anything, have you? Me? Yeah. I know. Uh, why? Oh, well, I, oh, I... I shouldn't be thinking about her at a time like this. Are you? Well, the, well oh. where's everybody? Mm, around. I uh, gotta find Paul and get to work. Excuse me. Hey, you're all dressed up today. Not especially. You look like the bride yourself. Mm -hmm. Hello, I thought I saw you. I, uh, I got a lot of work to do, if you'll excuse me. Say, that's a knockout. You like it? Uh-huh. Have you got a date? Nah. But I could be persuaded. You could? Say, this needs looking into. I'll tell you what, honey. I gotta go have my hair done. But I'll meet you at one at Rosie's. I want to say goodbye to some of the crowd. I sure am glad you're getting wise. It's been a long time between songs. I'll see you there. Hey, where's Hot? I gotta see him. I wouldn't know. Hey, wait a minute. Want to hear a great song? No, I am, don't you? I'm Benny Lewis, a hit songwriter. Yeah, I write words of music both, just like Berlin, only I'm more pathetic. Listen. Hey, she's gone. Huh? Hey, Maxie, listen, something horrible's happened. I know, I just heard it. Oh, now listen to me, will you? You remember that time I was up here playing me for Capri the other day? Yes, yes. Well, some other fellow was hanging around listening, remember? Mm -hmm. Well, he told some other fellas about it. You know what they did? No. They brought out me for Stromboli. It's incredible. Joe, I want to mm -hmm. see hey, listen, you. boss, will you? I want you to hear something. Sure, good. Recognize it? Well, sure, June Moon and 2-4. It's Paul Sears' old song, Montana Sun, the one you turned down. Well, what do you know? Well, then what's the difference? I got two songs for the price of one, didn't I? <laughs> Something. He's not the kind of a guy who can think for himself. Oh, I can't do anything about it. He doesn't care anything about me. He never did. Well, he's in trouble, and you're the only one who can help. But he don't want to see me. I... I told him you were here. It can't do any harm. I don't know. Uh, promise me one thing. What? Well... No matter what happens, come see me afterwards, will you? Hello, Eddie. Oh, hello, Fred. Uh, I didn't come here. It, Mr. Swartz. Gee, it's so good to see you, Eddie. I didn't know how good it would be. Oh, I'm glad you're well. 
thinking that you're going to be happy, Fred. Eddie, I've been thinking about you. I've been waking up every morning thinking about you. Oh, are you getting up in the morning again, Fred? Eddie, did, did Maxie tell you anything about me or say anything? Yeah, he, he said you were going to be married. I guess I should have congratulated you. Eddie, I don't want to get married. That's it. I, you see, I don't want to get married it. anymore. Don't say it unless you mean it. I couldn't stand it. I do mean it, Eddie. I, I mean it more than anything in the world. I don't want to get... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go away. This is Miss Fletcher. I'm she... afraid I'll have I to go, Miss... Fred. Oh, no, wait. Eddie, please. Goodbye, please don't. Miss Fletcher. But Eddie? Fred? Huh? What's the matter with you? Anybody think it was her? You were going to marry instead of me. There's something I gotta tell you. Yeah? What is it? Eileen. I don't want to get married. I mean, you and me. You know what you're saying? Yeah, well, you see, I shouldn't have done it in the first place, well, and I never realized... Well, this is a fine time to tell me. Why didn't you wait till Friday? Well, I just now realized... And you think that... that all you have to do is to tell me that that settles it? Well, well it I... doesn't quite work that way. Well, why... You well... think I'm gonna stand by and let you throw me over for that little snip? She's no snip. I'll sue her. I'll sue her for alienation. That's what I'll do. You can't, because she was born right here in New York State. You seem to have forgotten that I was engaged to another man and you took me away from him. How about that? I didn't help that. I didn't have... Well, it, it, it isn't honest. No, and don't I think you're going to get away with it. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, I was just leaving. Uh, stick around, Eileen. What do you mean? How come Lucille paid 150 bucks for that new dress? Yeah, 146.50. How do I know? Am I her manager? Well, you put her up to it. You put her up to spending money I ain't even got. You're drunk. Well, how did this turn out to be a foursome? Now, you can hear this, too, Lucille. What? It's her. She's been, she's been making him spend his money and waste a lot of his time, and... Yeah, and she's putting ideas in your head, too. What? You mean this outfit? Oh, this is just a rag. That's what I mean. Look, I ain't even earned that dough yet. Since when do I have to report to you? Yeah, she's got her own mind. You shut up. You hear her? Oh, keep still. I'm sick of this whole thing. I'm sick of this waiting, waiting around forever to get the things I want. By now, I've waited so long, I wonder if it matters anymore. And I'm sick of the sound of music. Do I have to sit around here ten more years listening to June Moon? Waiting for you to sell another song? I'd Look, die first. Seal, I... What do you know about that? If I had any brains, I'd walk out on you. I haven't got any brains. I'm going home. You mean all the time she was married to you, she didn't approve your music? Yeah. Yeah, she never did go for my songs much. Fred, I'll tell you something else, too. I should have told Don't you, you before. Don't you believe him? I believe what? What? You didn't know your fiancé was saving you for a spare, did That's you? That's not true. Don't believe him. He's just well, trying to separate us. What do you mean, a spare? She told you she was engaged to be married. She wasn't. Hart kicked her out. That's why she picked up with you. Should have told you a long time. Is that true? What do you mean, is it true? Just what I said. Now, answer me. Is it true? Of course it is, you little fool. Hmm. And now, have I got permission to go? Or maybe your little girlfriend would like to say something? Well, if she does, I'll know that I can believe her. Paul, I'm, I'm sorry about everything. Oh, that's all right, kid. Um... Glad I could help fix things up for you. Hey, I don't have to marry her anymore. Oh, Fred, I'm Eddie. so happy. Only, gee, I still got the tickets. It says Frederick M. Stevens and wife. I wonder if those steamship lines allow you to change your wife. Sure, if you don't do it in midstream. Uh, why? Do those big boats go very fast? Oh, they go awful fast. What you want is a freighter that goes real slow.
sure is a strong word. But over the years, we at Westinghouse have learned to live by that word. The night story of the sureness behind every Westinghouse product begins in this electrical laboratory. The harnessing of this electricity with sureness and the building of all kinds of electrical products is the business of Westinghouse. Building motors like this one, for instance, bigger than a house, the world's largest single electric motor to pump the water that irrigates half a million acres. Electric motors work for you, too. Did you ever think how many motors you have right in your own home? Almost every house uses from eight to a dozen motors. In refrigerator, vacuum cleaner, fan, ironer. While some electrified homes may use as many as two dozen motors, doing the work of two teams of horses, four horsepower. But that's only half the story of the motors that work for you. For back of every industrial worker in America, or seven horsepower of electricity. Industry long ago learned it could be sure of Westinghouse motors. Something you can profit by too. Be sure when you buy any electrical products or appliances. Look for the name Westinghouse. For home or business, for farm or factory. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. in tonight's cast were Gene Carson, Jack Lemon, and Eva Marie Saint. Others in the cast were Carl Kent, Henry Lasco, David Opatashu, Natalie Priest, and Philip Sterling. Paul Brenson saying good night for Westinghouse, hoping you'll be back again next week. Meanwhile, be sure to take advantage of our offer. Watch a load of your laundry washed and dried by those Westinghouse twins, the laundromat and the Westinghouse clothes dryer. Call your Westinghouse dealer tomorrow. Good night. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.